Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rick, The Honest Mechanic, and I would like to introduce you the newest member of our family. Behind me is a 2017 Articat Wildcat 700 Trail. Uh, this is a base model. There's not too many, let's say, super duper accessories. Like it doesn't have the updated shocks. It doesn't have power steering, uh, but that's how I was looking for it. And the reason I like the trail is because it's only 50 inches wide, which means that I should be able to fit in just about any trail. So we're gonna go over a little bit about this unit and what I liked about it, why I was seeking one out. And if you're wondering, yes, it did come with all of this dirt for free. So as you can tell, there are numerous adaptions that have been made to this, like modification wise, I should say, homemade roof, homemade windshield, homemade bottom doors, including the rack in the back that you see there that bolts up to or just slides into the uh, receiver hitch. We're going to get to all of that in a minute. Uh, but one thing I do like out of all of these accessories is these doors that he's manufactured. Uh, I'm going to get into much more detail, but this is actually really nice because the way that these are designed, you can get a little bit of splashing clearly onto your pant legs. So that's going to stop a lot of it, but let's, Maybe get this clean and then we'll talk about it some more. All right, and now this is what she looks like clean. Well, at, at least cleaner. I mean, I didn't take out the brush or nothing. I just took out the pressure washer as you saw there. Um, but uh, let's get a closer look. This is pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited. Okay, so if we start from the front, uh, like I was talking about accessories and stuff like that, there's a whole bunch of accessories on this machine that have been added, uh, like little add-ons and here and there, all homemade stuff. Some of which I like, some of which I don't like, but I'm gonna to get to it. Um, for example, got a light in the front here, right dead center. And I'm also noticing that my one headlight looks like it's got garbage in it. And this one doesn't. And I remember this one doesn't work. So I'm gonna to have to look into that and maybe clean it up. Hopefully I can just put a new bulb in it and be done with it. This light actually works and this light's quite bright. Uh, I was talking to my wife about it and it looks like it's staying. Uh, she likes it where it is. It is a nice feature if you were to have to use the winch because you got lights there at night. Um, however, not a big fan of the quad headlights on top and that's because right up there I have a light bar that I kept from the Suzuki Sidekick that I had a while back. Um, so I think I'm going to put that up there. I think it'll look a little bit better and provide just as much light. Um, this uh, I'm gonna say that this was supposed to be like a hinge. I'm gonna remove that um, and I'm gonna make it open the other way. So rather than having it fold this way, I'm gonna have it open just a little bit so we have airflow coming into the cabin that way. Uh, I did that on my dad's Rhino and it works really well. Uh, and that actually came factory on some of the OEM style windshields like they're, they're meant for that. If we continue off to the sides, we already talked about the panels that he's made with the doors, I like these. I am a huge fan of these. And what I really, really impressed with is the way he's done it. So it may not look like much from here in a camera point of view, but all of the bracketry is using the existing hardware. So there's no holes, nothing has been drilled into the original machine. Everything can be completely reversed without having any evasive, you know, uh, stuff left to the machine. You wouldn't even know if you took it off. So I'm gonna keep these, but what I am gonna do, I'm gonna clean them up. I'm gonna, you know, maybe clean up some of the welds and cuts and stuff like that so that nobody gets, you know, tetanus shot or need the tetanus shot. So I'm gonna clean that up, make it look nice and pretty again. Uh, I got some really good paint for that. And then if we continue moving on, oh, I forgot to mention there's a wiper. I'm gonna probably put something a little bit more me like mechanical. It's just a hand wiper. You can see the levers inside. 
which is it works clearly it works but it's a little on the small side mm -hmm. i don't know exactly what you're going to be using it for so i'm thinking i'm going to put an electric one for the driver and i'll move that one for the passenger so if they're not driving so they can wipe their own windshield but then we move to the top so not exactly sure what happened he did tell me that the intent was to try and form the top to the roll cage because it does have a full roll cage and I th it is kind of like you know egg shaped so I think that was what he was doing kind of crispy so I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet I think I might paint it I don't think it's going to clean up very well because it's it's pretty pretty badly burnt I like it I mean I want one I want the the roof on it uh, and I don't see the point of re-replacing it because it's other than the fact it kind of looks terrible uh, I think I might just paint it maybe lime green like the back here so I don't know comment down below what do you think I should do maybe should I just leave it should I paint it I don't want to go black and the reason for that is because in the summertime I'm hoping that it doesn't attract too much heat so that's why I want to go with a different color maybe I can just go white I don't know because it's already kind of white I don't know comment down below uh, these here are I'll get to that in a minute, but these here are definitely a little bit yellowed. I'm going to see if I can clean these up because they have a purpose. I'll get to that. And then we've got this box down here, which he again has manufactured, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm going to keep it. I don't exactly know what this was for. Maybe an ice hogger or something like that. I know what this hole's for. He said the ice hogger motor fit in there. This, the bit maybe, set on both sides. I can't remember. Um, this would have been for the fishing rods, I believe. But one thing I'm not happy about, though, is that it's not bolted down. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to bolt it down. I think what I'm going to do is add little ears here, use the existing hardware, just like he did. And again, just to clean up. So kind of cool about that. Maybe put a, a latch so that I can lock it. I'm not sure. And then we've got this over here. This is, well, it had its purpose. So it goes down onto the hitch, um, and it was intended to have an ice hut uh, all rolled up in its package, like in its tent. It looks like kind of like a tent. He showed me some pictures of it all loaded up, and this thing had a lot of gear at one point, and it would just kind of sit up up top here, and it was all strapped down, and he would go ice fishing. He had his ice hut, he had his propane tank with his heater and all that stuff all on this machine it was actually pretty good which is probably why he's dialed up the shocks a little bit I'm probably gonna dial those back because they look like they're a little stiffer than I'd like them um, so otherwise yeah I'm super stoked about all of the little add-ons like, again like this is all cosmetic guys I can clean that up it's gonna look really good I can't wait to show you guys on a trail because it these if it's anything like the original Wildcat they are awesome so going back to what these are here for, it goes along with this, and this is actually pretty cool. What it is is a door frame made of the same material, and I guess tie wraps were on sale that week, but uh, again, using the same kind of uh, principle where there's no cuts or anything made, he's got these two little pins that once you open the door, the shorter pin uh, goes in here, at this end, just like that, and there's one that goes back here. I haven't installed it very many times, so I'm still gonna need some practice, but pretty sure if you put the back one in first, so the back one goes in, and then with some effort, you can stretch the frame a little bit and get the front one to pop in just like that it ain't gonna fall out because it's pretty well wedged in there so that's your door now and when you latch it you end up with an enclosure is it perfect no but there's a reason why there is a full enclosure and I again I want to try and get all of this yellowing out you guys have a product that might help me with that again more comments put them down below so if we sit in the cab here 
you'll notice that down below here is a box and yeah it's being kind of held from rattling with some uh, paper which is gonna get repaired uh, I'm gonna come up with something better but this is actually a heater so if I turn the key on it's a heater that uses the uh, coolant from the engine I'll show you that in a second and then if I turn this on there's actually three positions so that'll be really cool in the spring or yeah spring or fall when I'm going for rides because you can actually kind of divert the air with these little doors on each side and then there's more air that comes out the bottom so that's really cool and you'll see right now it's actually um, been bypassed he said there was a leak dripping on the inside so I'm not quite sure what's going on there I mentioned maybe possibly a screw when he installed it poked the heater core um, but yeah so he's got it teed in right here a couple of fittings this is just looped back together and then you got this line so I'm definitely going to try and make this work again but I'm also thinking that I might put some uh, ball valves in the heater core like probably like right here one for each side so that no liquid flows through it during the summertime and I'm not let's say boiling in the cab and then when fall or the cold weather comes around I can just come up here open up the valves and then get it to flow again now I'm wondering maybe it actually wasn't leaking inside and it just was causing engine issues because it was possibly not bled properly and because of that it might have caused a couple of overheats I'm not sure but uh, that's something I'm going to work with okay I was going to wait for a future video to do this but I just can't this really bugs me this yellowing so I'm going to try something that I do on uh, headlights which is just good old WD-40 and it actually it, it'll bring back some luster to it is it forever it's not but even if I did this periodically just to kind of clear it up because it, it's quite yellow it's not necessarily super hard to look through but um, I don't know let's just see what we'll do in the corner here better remember too that I have to do the inside let's do I should have maybe put a tape to do that before and after stuff that everybody does now let's do the inside this is really thick plastic I'm not sure where you got this but I mean I'm not sure if you see it in the camera but look how thick that is it's got to be like almost one eighth like you're not going to tear it with a branch that's for sure I mean other than being cleaner I don't know it's still kind of still kind of got some yellow to it how about we do the whole thing and we compare it to the other side so that's the driver's side after I cleaned it all up with some WD-40 it is it's better it's not it's not great though I mean it's got some yellowing it might not be easy to see on camera but it's clearly transparent I mean it's not the worst I can definitely live with it for a little bit and I'm gonna guess that this pocket was for when the door is closed so that you had a little bit of airflow coming out the back so that nothing would fog up because of the heater but uh, anyways let's go see what the other side did because all I did with the other side is clean it with some soap and water and this is the passenger side cleaned up with just soap and water again I don't know maybe it is a little bit better on the other side it's hard to tell but uh, I don't know it's again I'll live with it but I did also clean the windscreen with some WD-40 again I'm not sponsored but I do know that on automotive lenses on, like on your car your your headlights try it 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 works for me it's not exactly a, a long-term like effect but it does work for a few months anyways and that brings me to the part of the video where I kind of explain as to why I chose this over let's say the competitor which would be the razor uh, but before I do that I got to put on my special team Arctic shirt because I actually worked at the dealer level on Arctic cat products as well as Kawasaki and ironically enough this came from the dealership that I had just left uh, a few years prior hopefully you guys can still hear me with the microphone 
And yeah, it is, it's a nice shirt. I wore it as a tech. Um, but the reason I ended up with this shirt is because the boss bought everyone a shirt for Christmas. He made this as a choice and I truly love it. But going back to the story is when I was at the dealer level uh, and I was the lead technician, I was invited by Articat along with my boss and the lead uh, sales guy to a resort, a ski resort, a couple hours away from where we were to test the prototype Wildcat 1000 when it first came out in 2013. Now this was in 2012 because again, it was a prototype and I actually got to put in a couple of words as to what I thought was good, what I didn't like about the Wildcat, uh, and it was a blast. They had set up a course. We were, t we were hitting everything from whoops to jumps to tight turns, going uphill, downhill, heavy braking, heavy acceleration. I thought it was a superior machine to anything I had tried at the time. Uh, what did I not like about it? Well, at the time, it was also a very large machine. Nothing else on the market was so long and so wide. Uh, so, and a lot of us, I think, agreed with that. And lo and behold, a few years later, they came out with a trail and the sport to kind of fit everybody's uh, terrain, I guess. In my area, I think the trail here is going to fit perfectly in my backyard. So that's why I chose it, along with a couple of other neat features. Like, I really like the way the suspension works. If this works as well as the original Wildcat, I am going to be super happy because uh, the original Wildcat was amazing. Don't get me wrong, like it was perfectly tuned for that course by, you know, Articat technicians. Um, but yeah, that's why I chose this one. I know the product a little bit and I've done, I've done a little bit of research. Yes, they do have some issues, uh, but overall, I really like the machine as of right now. But we have to go for a ride. We're not gonna be able to do that in this video though. But we are going to go take a ride soon. I can't promise you when. But what I am going to do first uh, in, a pre in the next video is I'm going to do a couple of other little tweaks to this machine. I want to go through the whole thing starting from changing the oils all the way to checking the belt. And there's a lot of little stuff that might surprise you that will I get nitpicking, nitpicking on is stuff like these tie wraps. I'm going to zoom in on this, but there is something that bugs me about these. One of my biggest pet peeves, guys, is seeing a tie wrap or a zip tie or whatever you want to call these cut the way this one is cut. This one is the same. They're all the same. And they're sticking out, So and they're sharp. Again, I don't know if you guys have ever put your hand or your arm down somewhere when you're working on a machine and you pull your hand out and you'll, you'll slice yourself right open with these. So my biggest pet peeve is having some of these little ends sticking out. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna cut all of them around both window frames here, uh, cause they're all like that. They're, it, it does require an actual flush cutting pair of pliers. Uh, and yes, they do make them. You can make your own by just grinding one and that's probably what I'm gonna do. And if I do actually do that, I'm gonna make a quick video so you guys know what I'm doing. But another question that people will have is if you're cutting them that flush, well, are you gonna lose strength on that particular uh, fastener? Well, no, because all of the tangs and all of the little uh, mechanism that holds these tight is inside. It's not at the end, it's actually further inside, kind of closer to the center of this. So anyways, that is a pet peeve. And yes, I'm gonna be doing all of these because I don't want anybody to get their hands sliced or their arms sliced open and they're everywhere on this machine like you see them on the inside here there's tons of tie wraps everywhere um i'm just going to clean it up just a general cleanup of everything but yeah i know it, it's weird but it is what it is so that's going to do it for today's video guys i didn't do anything let's say mechanical in this video uh but i did want to show you guys our new addition to the family. There will be some videos done on this, of course. Uh, it's, it's in good working condition right now, but I'm still, like I mentioned, I'm gonna do some oil changes. I'm gonna definitely play around with that heater core, see if I can get that heat in the cab working again. Probably a, a good bleeding video in there, probably a whole bunch of messes coming as well. Uh, but again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.